there is so little known about this goddess that you might say there's an air of mystery about her. Er is considered the goddess of physicians and medicine. Heathens often pray to her for healing and wellness. She is more controversial than one might imagine, though, and the reasons for that come with how little information we have on her and some of the reasons why that may be. The most direct historical attestation of Er as a goddess is from the Prose Edda, in which Snorri says that she is the best of physicians among the gods. And that's it. Nothing else is written of her before or after in the Prose Edda with her as a goddess. There is no story. There is no further description of her realm or her character. She is simply listed as third among the goddesses after Frigg and Saga, suggesting great importance, and then is afterward unmentioned. There is also an attestation in a text that is often associated with the Prose Edda, though it may not be of Snorri's authorship and is therefore not commonly published with the Prose Edda or even translated into English. But it is here that Er is listed among the maidens of Odin, the Valkyries. Now, whether or not this is a miscategorization of Er is unknown. Perhaps she was seen as a Valkyrie rather than a goddess, and perhaps she was a goddess rather than a Valkyrie. Perhaps she's both. It makes some sense, though, that a healing goddess might be among the Valkyries, the Valkyries have several rather macabre descriptions across their attestations, including weaving the fate of a battle out of the entrails of fallen men in Njal's saga. While in other attestations, they are seen as noble women clad in full armor atop monstrous steeds, carrying out the orders of the Allfather. Er's place as a Valkyrie could have been a number of things, from mercy in battle to ensuring a clean death to those suffering on the battlefield. Now, uh, I apologize ahead of time for my pronunciations here, but Er's association with healing is further attested in the poetic Edda during the sayings of Fjolsvin, when the hero Svitdag has reached the gate of a massive abode belonging to a Jotun, and standing at the gate is another Jotun named Fjolsvin, who answers Svitdag's questions before finally being granted entry, as he is destined to fall in love with the Jotun Mengloth, who rules the fortress. But within the fortress, Svipdog sees a group of women sitting on a hill, and he asks who they are. Fjolsvin describes it as a healing mountain, which gives reprieve to any woman who may climb it. And he further gives the names of the figures on the hill, and among them is Er. Mengloth, interestingly enough, is also on this hill, and suggesting that she too, even as a Jotun, is associated with healing. Svipdog asks the Jotun if these entities offer protection to those who give sacrifice to them. And Fjolsvin answers that, yes, indeed they do, saying that even in the most hopeless of situations, they will protect as best they can. So, from these sources, we have a seemingly contradictory image of Er, from which the main thing that we can gather is that she is associated with healing. She seems to blur the line between goddess and Valkyrie, as well as Aesir and Jotun, and it could be concluded that she is a goddess that just doesn't care about the lines between Aesir and Jotun and instead focuses on healing all those who have injury, regardless of who they may be. This is similar, of course, to physicians today, who are primarily concerned with the patient in front of them, no matter who it may be. This attitude, including the concept of doctor-patient confidentiality, goes back to the Hippocratic Oath of Ancient Greece, which originally opened by swearing an oath to a variety of medicine deities. So it follows that there would be a similar attitude among the Norse with their physicians, which could be represented here. Now, with the presence of Er in this capacity, we would wonder what place did women have in medicine in a world where the best of physicians among the Aesir is a goddess? And if we are to believe the sagas, it would seem that there were women physicians who were not only attending the wounded, but in charge of operations behind the battlefield. The Heimskringla, in chapter 234 of St. Olaf's saga, mentions briefly an unnamed healing woman running a makeshift hospital of sorts and attending those who have been wounded in a recent battle, and she is depicted issuing commands to others attending the wounded as she prepares a uh, method of diagnosing wounds for others to apply. Her mention is brief as she does her best to attend to a man who had been shot in the chest with an arrow. She places pincers around the arrowhead and attempts to remove it, but it doesn't seem that the arrowhead can be removed safely due to the arrow's barbs. The man, knowing this was it for him, hands his golden armband to the doctor, telling her to do with it what she will, informing her simply that the king had given it to him that morning. 
He then grasps the pincers himself and rips the arrowhead out, removing parts of his heart, clinging to the arrowhead's barbs. He laughs when he sees fatty tissue from his heart hanging from the arrowhead, remarking that the king had fed them well. He then promptly dies. The mention of this woman, though she is unnamed, is an interesting historical note because later in the Middle Ages, women would not be allowed to attend medical schools at all. But it seems that this replaced a long-standing tradition of healing women in Norse culture. This isn't the only healing woman that's mentioned in the sagas either. Uh, there's another doctor named Alfgirth, who is sought when two of three brothers in the saga are killed and the last one is badly wounded. Alfgirth winds up helping this man fake his death by prepping their bodies for burial the very next morning and letting others presume that the surviving brother was buried as well. And in doing this, Alfgirth was able to block the news of this man's survival from his enemies. But beyond these mentions and stories of healing women, Er is barely mentioned. We know nothing of her beyond her association with healing and physicians. And even some of the conclusions that I mention here are strictly theoretical. There's no confirmation of any kind beyond the words on the page, which are very limited. And packaged with this limitation, however, has come a variety of extrapolations and debate about Er and what her nature may well have been. So many sources on Er simply have a one-sentence description. Goddess associated with healing. <laughs> With no context beyond that whatsoever. And the reason for this is, is that we don't really have much. From the perspective of modern practice, however, Er is one of the more highly attested goddesses in her association with healing medicine and physicians. And the philosophy about how she may work is interesting. Now, these conclusions, I will preface strongly, are not based in lore, but modern SPG surrounding the worship of Er. Now, the SPG around Er that I'm familiar with suggests that while she may be directly involved with healing and medicine through those little elements of luck that seem to play out in healing, that she may also be involved with the physicians themselves. Now, the idea would be that an offering to Er is to ask her to give aid to an attending physician, that they might have those eureka moments or be present at the right time in order to heal their patients. There is also a sense that Er may be involved with the patients as much as the healers, relieving moments of stress or giving the body strength when otherwise it wouldn't make sense. But again, this seems to be modern SPG around Er. But it does, however, feel consistent with the stories of these healing women in the sagas. But hey, let me know your thoughts on Er. Whether or not this SPG seems consistent to you, or if you have another perspective or story relating to her, for a goddess with next to no information written about her in the Eddas and Sagas, practice around her has endured strongly in modern practice. And one of the ways that we keep that alive is by sharing our stories around her. And with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. The like and subscribe buttons have wounded each other, so take the time to heal them both. And be sure to ring the bell and make sure your subscription is airtight. And remember to find a way or make one.